Uh, then the Gemara talked about um, the uh, continuation of Rab Nachman to Rab Yitzchak statements that what does it mean Shmuel got old? And the Gemara mentions here that Shmuel was only 52 years old. I mentioned yesterday that Taisus has two calculations of how uh, Shmuel is 52 at this at the at the time of his passing. He lives till 52. It's interesting. Rashi says that he found a Yerushalmi uh, that uh, explains it based on a verse. There's a verse that hints to 52 because um, he the, the um, uh, uh, it says that he will dwell at the Mishkan ad oilam forever. And the word, the term oilam, uh, when it refers to a levi, it refers to 50 years because the levium, they would stop serving in the temple at the age of 50 or stop carrying. So their, their service ended at the age of 50. They would not carry anymore the avoidas uh, um Masa, it's called serving by carrying. In the, the time of the when Jewish people were in the desert, they carried the tabernacle, and so that's called avodas masa, the avoda, the service of carrying. So that was done until they were fifty. So the term oilam world for a Levite, for a Levi means fifty. So uh, when it when it mentions that Shmuel was uh, brought to Eli Hakoyen to serve in the Mishkan. And Shmuel's mother brought him there. She, he was two years old. He was weaned. And uh, he was there, Ad Oilam. His, his mother brought him there to be there, Ad Oilam, for the world of a, until forever, literally, literally it would mean forever. Or, and that refers to the world of a Levi, which is 50 years. So 50 plus two is 52. So that implies that he, passed away at the age of 52. Tysus, we mentioned yesterday, had two other calculations, how he calculates um, that Eli HaKoyen uh, was a was a, was a, was a shoifet, he was a, a judge, he lasted for 40 years, and right when he started was when uh, Hana, Shmuel's mother, had come to pray for a child, and um, uh, 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 Shmuel, so that would mean and Shmuel was born six months later. He was a he was a six month birth. He was a preemie, premature. Was born after six months, and there's a source for that that he was born after six months. It's a pasuk that implies that he was he was uh, premature, and uh, that means that uh, if if Eli Akayin lasted forty years, so then Shmuel Hanavi uh, started took over, so to speak at the age of uh, 40 or 39 and a half because he was sick. So, 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 uh, and then he, he, he ruled for 10 years that would make it till he's 49 and a half. And um, he ruled, he was, and then Shaul became, then he gave over the leadership that he made, brought, he anointed the King Shaul and Shaul lasted two and a half years. It would make him 52. So that's the uh, calculation, uh, one of the calculations of Tesis. Then Tesis goes through another calculation having to do with the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the fact that the Mishkan, I'm sorry, the Arain was um, captured and then it was brought, when it was brought back, it was brought to Avinadov's house. So you have 40 years of Eli and 20 years of Avinadov. Where the 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 uh, the mish the uh, the Arain was return was was placed in Avinadov's house, and so that equals sixty. And if you subtract, and the, you know that was uh, uh, that had to do with David Hamelach bringing the Arain from Avinadov's house later. And if you subtract the amount of years that David Hamelach ruled over Hebron, seven and a half years, you subtract that from the sixty, it ends up to be fifty fifty two. So, so subtract seven and a half from uh, from sixty, so you get uh, sixty to fifty two and a half. So uh, yesterday, uh, Moshe mentioned that. Uh, so so we say that Shmuel was pretty old, even though it, the 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 verse says he was old, 
but the 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 uh, the, the question is, he was only fifty two years old, and the Gemara says that's not old. Why does it say that he got old? Kashir zokan 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 Shmuel that Shmuel got old. So the Gemara answers that zikna kafza alav. The Gemara said that the uh, uh, old age it 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 jumped upon him. Uh, he he was he regretted anointing Shaul because Shaul did listen to Hashem and uh, uh, and so on. So uh, he also asked Hashem that uh, he should he shouldn't see Shaul uh, die in his lifetime. In other words, that Shaul, the work of his hand, should 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 uh, uh, should be a success, so to speak. And uh, so therefore. He um, uh, Shmuel ended up having to pass away because Shaul had to die right after him, and Shaul needed to die because David Amelach needed to take over, and uh, that was the uh, uh, that was the conclusion of that uh, Gemara that uh, uh, you find that someone could be pushed aside because of someone else. Shmuel Shmuel had to pass away in order that David would take over and become the new king because Shmuel wanted to, to wanted Shaul to outlive him and then uh, the, but then Shaul had to die so Shmuel had to die before that so that's the that's basically the Gemara now what I said Moshe was uh mentioned that we have in the in the Haggadah you have a similar thing with uh Rabbi Elazar ben Azariah getting old at a young age it turns out that the Ari Ari HaKadosh the famous Kabbalist the Ari Rabbi Yitzchak Luria says that Rabbi Elazar ben Azariah was a Gilgal of Shmuel Hanav. That Shmuel lived till 52, and Rabbi Elazar ben Azariah says he was really 18. He says, I'm like I'm 70 years old. Why did he say, I'm like I'm 70 years old? We say it in the Haggadah that Rabbi Elazar ben Azariah says, I am like 70 years old, and I didn't hear anyone. Uh, teach that uh, show proof that you uh, have to mention Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim Balelis until Ben Zayma came around. So he said, I'm like I'm 70 years old. What did he mean, I'm like I'm 70 years old? Because if you calculate the years of Shmuel Hanavi, 52, plus Rabbi Eloza Ben Azariah is 18. So if you calculate them together, I'm like I'm 70 because I, I have the soul, I have the Gilgal, the reincarnation, I'm the reincarnation of Shmuel and Shmuel was 52, Shmuel lived 52 years, and I uh, continued, I am continuing that life, and so therefore, I am like I am 70, so 52 and 18 is, is 70, and then and Rabbi Elizabeth ben Azari had 18 strands of the of white hair, and and uh, he took over, this was, the, that was a, f- a famous story that we, many of us learned together, and when we studied the brachis, where uh, Rabbi Elizabeth ben Azari was a young guy, and he was taking over Rabbi Gamliel, who was the family of the Nasiyam. And uh, uh, so he uh, Hashem made that he would have these eighteen strands of uh, white hair. So the, that's uh, a, uh, Rabbi, that's a, yes. that's a that's a fantastic explanation. Uh-huh. With the the Arizal and the eighteen and the fifty two and the seventy. So if you think that's about good. it, it goes even further because Harei Ani Kiven Shivim Shana. I am like Ben. Base nun nun base is that fifty two of the gematria is fifty two, and I am I am like in other words I'm calculating those fifty two years, and shana stands for Shmuel, um, shana, um, shana Shmuel Hanavi, um, what's the nun? There, there is some some gemat some Russia tevas there. I am like a shivim shana. It's Nishmas Shmuel Hanavi. I am like I am 70 years old because I have Nish Shana, Shivim Shana, because of Nishmas Shmuel Hanavi. The, the, the first letter, the, the, the word Shana stands for Nishmas Shmuel Hanavi. So it goes, a, you take it a little step further as well. You have the Gematria and Kiben, like, like 52. And because uh, I have Nishmas Shmuel Hanavi, the soul of Shmuel Hanavi in me. So there's broad, I'm, I'm, there's none of my own stuff. This is a, it's brought in and svarim when you uh, typical Haggadah type of uh, insights, you know, on Pesach night when the kids come home with all their divrei Torah, so they they come up with these, uh, you know, they they these are some of the uh, divrei Torah that you hear.
Um, okay, so say what the lamet is. The lamet. You had two nuns in it in Shmuel. You said Navi and Nefesh. No, 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 no. Sh Nishmas Shmuel Hanavi is the word Shana. Shivim Shana. I am 70 because of Nishmas Shmuel Hanavi. Shana stands for Nun Shin Hei Shana. Nishmas oh. Shmuel Hanavi. That's all. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so, so back to the Gemara over here. So we had... Um, um uh, so we oh, so we have this uh this the Gemara had asked this really a a question about uh sort of a a, a philosophical question or how Hashem runs the world uh uh I guess it's more of a theological question of 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 does Hashem push aside like is Shmuel gonna pass away? Before David, you know, the Gemara asks, is that possible because like because David has to be king, so therefore Shmuel has to die? Like, is that right that someone dies in order to make the other in order for the other person to uh to to uh have their what they need? So you push one person away from another person. That's the that was the Gemara's question. And uh the Gemara answered yes. Now, this uh, this uh, idea that you push one person aside for another, um, that's the way Rashi learns this. And um, the problem on Rashi is, what, what, what is the Gemara really saying? The Gemara is saying that Shmuel didn't like this whole idea of Shaul dying in his lifetime. Right. And he said that Raboina um, Shaloila, you made me equal to Moshe and Aaron. You made me equal. And um which uh and, and one of the Sparman says Shmuel is a Gilgal of Moshe and Aaron's soul. That's <laughs> you're talking about Gilgulim. Another little insight here, but you made me equal to Moshe and Aaron. And Moshe and Aaron, their Maise uh, Yodehem, um, their uh, work of their hands, which Rashi translates as referring to Yehoshua, Joshua, he lived out, he lived after them and continued their, their uh, you know, what they started. He, he, he lived, he was, they were able to uh, pass away with. The, with the feeling of, you know, that their the work of their hands continued. So Shmuel said, I also don't want to pass away without the work of my hands continuing, referring to Shmuel, referring to Shaul's kingship, that I don't want to pass away. I, I anointed Shaul, and I don't want him to die before me. So Hashem said, what should I do? Shaul has to um, um, has to die, but Shmuel doesn't let. Shmuel to kill Shmuel, people are gonna people are gonna say bad things about him. Why did he pass away early? So the Gemara said, if I do and, I, and if I don't kill either of them, so then What's going to happen is King David is supposed to already be king. And one kingship can touch upon another kingship. And therefore, Hashem says, I will make him old. So again, the Gemara was wondering, why does it say Shmuel got old? The Gemara answered that he got old. Zikna Kafza Olav, he got old because he uh, put in this request. And, um, and Hashem needed to make it look good for him. Because we didn't want people to gossip about Shmuel that he probably sinned, and that's why he died early. So therefore, Hashem made him get old, and this way he'll look like he's old, and people will think that he passed away as an older man 
and they won't have anything to gossip about it. They won't say anything negative that he passed away at a young age, and they won't say he sinned or anything. And so that's what happened. So he ended up getting old. I was looking old in order that he could pass away. And then Shaul can then pass away because he wanted Shaul to outlive him because that was the work of his hand. He wanted to be able to say that my the work of my hands outlived me, just like Moshe and Aaron did. They they had Yoshua. Yoshua outlived them. So uh the same thing is uh, uh that um that Shmuel wanted. So then, but Sh so Shmuel passed away early, but only after he looked old. And then Shaul passed away. And then King David was able to become the king over Hebron. And then ultimately be king over the entire Jewish people. Rabbi, a question. Yeah. Why or from where do you get the fact that Masih de him means um, that they gave over to the next generation, the leader. Why can't it just be Maaseh to him? The things that they did in their lifetime, meaning, you know, the fact that Moshe built the Mishkan, that Aaron did, uh, you know. So what you're, all... Yeah, what, there are other pshat to me. I was going to mention it. Thanks for bringing it up. Rashi brings down this shot that it refers to Yehoshua, but there are other Hey, there are other explanations here because the Gemara doesn't say clearly what it means. My say yodayim, the work of their hand outlived them. The Gemara doesn't say clearly what the work of their hand is. Rashi translates it to mean uh, Yoshua, their student. Uh, but uh, there are other Pirushim that it refers to the Mishkan, like you said. That that's a good. That's a pshat. It's, a, it's mentioned. Um, Rabino Gershon learns that way. Uh, the Maharsha says it refers to Elazar, the son of Aaron, who was became the Kohen Gadol. So uh, um, uh, through uh, Moshe and Aaron, right before Aaron passed away, it, it was, uh, the, you know, they took his clothes and put it on, Moshe took his clothes, put it on Elazar. And right as, as Aaron was passing away, that's when Elazar uh, took over and... Um, you know, so there are there there are those two uh, other perushim, and uh, another shot is um, that the man and the anani kavod, the the man and the anani kavod, they lasted even after Moshe and Aaron passed away. So. Uh, So in any event, yeah, so you got like a, a four pay uh, there, but uh, but that's good, yeah. So so the Mishkan is one of the valid uh, that's mentioned uh, in the Rishonim, Rabbeinu Gershon. Um, yes, Ben. I want to say maybe maybe the that he was complaining that Moses and and Aaron had somebody carry on what they were doing, but his sons are not going to carry on what he was doing. Shmuel. So the thing is, we just learned that Shmuel, there was a a, a, a prophet called Yoel ben Pesuel. Yes. And we said that who was Pesuel? That actually was Shmuel, Hanavi. That Shmuel's sons did not follow in his ways, but one of them seems to have done shuva, and his name was Yoel, and he became a Navi. Oh. So maybe initially he, he wasn't following in his ways or wasn't as righteous as Shmuel was. But as we see, Shmuel was on the level of Moshe and Aaron. And somewhere I saw, and I don't know the original source for this, but I did see a while back that when it says Shmuel is equal to Moshe and Aaron, it means he's equal to them together. Right. In other words, not he's equal to Moshe and he's equal to Aaron. No, he's equal to them when they're on top, when they're together combined, he's even equal to their combination of them. When they're joined forces. I, no, I don't know total, what this, I don't know how to, I, don't, I didn't, both. I wouldn't necessarily translate it that way, but that's the way I saw, I, I've seen it that way. I see some people uh, know something about this. Okay, yes, David. 
Rabbi? No, let, Mordech, let Mordechai go first. Okay, Mordechai. Yeah, I think it says uh, that uh, Korach, who was a descendant of, I mean, an ancestor of Shmuel, uh, that uh, he saw this, uh, uh, he saw this Pasek, and that led him on the wrong way because he, uh, he figured that if uh, Shmu was the equivalent of Moshe and Arba, then certainly he's greater than Moshe. <laughs> right, right. But I don't know. I don't know that I initially would have understood it to mean he's greater than Moshe and Aaron put together, and he's greater than both as added added up together. I don't know if I would have translated it that way initially. I mean, I I saw it. I saw it somewhere brought down that way, but I I, I you know I don't know if I would have translated it that way initially. Um, that's what that, when yeah. you add the vow, that's what it means. Both. He's if equal to Moshe and Aaron. Oh, you would say oh Aaron. Hmm. Moses or Aaron. Sometimes in Hebrew, above means or, you know. <coughs> Moshe and Aaron, each one had qualities. He's equal to Moshe, he's equal to Aaron. I don't know. Rabbi. I don't know if I, uh, yes, Moshe. Can two Gilgulim come back at one time when they're, I mean. Above my pay grade. You got the wrong, you got the wrong guy. <laughs> you're going to have to ask Rabbi Rice or Rabbi Citron. Okay, ask, but no, I'm just Rabbi saying. We, every, that yeah, we, the, know. The, my understanding is that there's seven Gilgulim that 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 maybe are David, before David, David David Olensky, you want to answer uh, this Moshe's uh, question? No, I don't know the answer to that one. <laughs> the other thing I want to ask Rabbi is that Moshe Moshe Rabbeinu, when he, you know, when he he was very old when he when he passed, but he didn't get to go in, into Eretz Yisrael, but Yeshua did, you know. So I mean, it. it this is sort of like what we're talking about, where Shmuel did not want to pass before uh, Shaul, you know. That what? Say that again. He didn't want to pass before but Shaul. Shaul did not want to pass. Uh, that, that Shmuel did not want to, to pass before Shaul. But Moshe mm -hmm. Rabbeinu, the same thing was he passed before he uh, he, he entered into Eretz Israel. Israel. Uh huh. That's uh. It's all about a legacy, kind of a, uh, interesting. Yeah. Interesting uh, idea, interesting thought. It's also like his his followers passed away um, during the during the uh, during the forty years in the First desert. Generation of elders. Passed, his his generation passed away before him. That's a that's an interesting uh, interesting thought. But uh, at least his student, his main student, didn't you know, or his mishkan didn't. And so I guess it's yeah. Anyway, interesting uh, connection. You didn't get to go to Israel. In other words, you can't, it doesn't really fit the Gemara. In other words, it's not really a question on the Gemara. The Gemara doesn't say. But um, this this makes me believe that Shmuel did commit an Avera against, uh, in other words, because because Moshe Rabbeinu, he hit the, the staff against the stone, and this was his, the, this is why he couldn't enter into Eretz Israel. Yeah, yeah, but, but keep in mind, Moshe. And Aaron, this is going to Eretz Yisrael wasn't the work. They didn't they didn't do something and then it 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 flopped. They they didn't they didn't get to Eretz Yisrael. They never got there in the first place. You know what I mean? That that, that bitlu maise yodeim that it says loy uh, bitlu maise yodeim chayeim means that the what they accomplished was not ruined. That's what that's what it says. In other words, it's it's not about oh I didn't reach my my ultimate goal. Is that what I what I did didn't get torn up, you know what I mean? That so it's not exactly the same idea of our Gemara. You're saying he never made it to Eretz Yisrael, so it's like what he worked for didn't he didn't accomplish. But our is not talking about if he accomplished or he didn't accomplish. Our Gemara is talking about that what he did didn't get torn up in his lifetime. I yeah, see. Didn't get ruined. So it's a little different. Uh, David, did you want to say something? Yeah, I just wanted to say that um, I'm, I, I don't mean to embarrass uh, Yitzchak. Uh, I'm sorry, Isaac, but before you joined, it was a very interesting uh, explanation from the Arizal and uh, regarding Shmuel Hanavi and Rabbi Elazar Ben Azaria. So uh, if you get a chance to listen to the recording again of the first 20 minutes before you joined, uh, actually, the, 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 the between like the 10 minutes after and 20 minutes after was really, really interesting before you joined. So I apologize if I embarrassed, but... Um, you're, you're, oh, yeah, you're, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. but it's really oh, i think promoter. you would i think i think you would enjoy it 
I'm okay. going through each of the past classes. Thank you very much. So, uh, By the way, now that I'm here, today's the yard site of my Rebbe, Rav Mary Yechaskel. Forget it. Mayor David Ben Yechaskel. Hashem Yona Domov. Rav Mayor Kahani. Today is his yard site. Nishama should have an aliyah. Amen. Amen. So, um, uh, so the Gemara here was uh, getting back to what we were saying. So Shmuel um, had davened. He ended up causing himself. It seems like from his tefillah, he caused himself to have to pass away early because he wanted Shaul to outlive him and Shaul couldn't really outlive him too long. Because Shaul needed to pass away before David becomes actually king. So Hashem had to make Shaul pass away. So ultimately, Shmuel had to pass away. It turns out he passed away four months before Shaul passed away. And uh, that was a, it was a necessity. So in other words, it boiled down to the fact that he davened that his, uh, he, his work of his hands should not be torn up in his lifetime. So Shaul would stay king and ultimately did stay king for, you know, for uh, uh, two extra years, whatever, however long it was after he sinned with Amalek. And um, and that's what and that ended up happening. That ended up uh, um, causing that it ended up, you know, allowing Shmuel to uh, um, it ended up or I should say causing Shmuel to have to pass away before uh before David. Now, um, uh, the, the the thing is that the commentaries are not so happy with this explanation of Rashi. And the reason is because if you think about it, Rashi translated it, does one person push away another person's life? And it's referring to, does King, does David HaMelech needing to rule um Shmuel is pushed away because of David. But the commentary is asked, it's not really Shmuel being pushed away because of David. Shmuel is pushed away because of his prayer. It's not, it's not that David is going to be king and now Shmuel has to pass away. Shmuel wants to pass away before because he wants Shoal to live to outlive him. Now Shoal is pushed away because of David. Well, I mean, Shoal deserves to die. Shoal was deserved of death before. But... Um, but but you can't say that Shmuel is pushed aside and his life is ended because of David. It's it's ended because he wants it to end because he doesn't want Shaul to to die before him. So this is the uh, this is the question of some of the uh, commentaries on Rashi, and uh, one of the commentaries wants to say that maybe you could translate it differently, and uh, if you translate it, that can. Uh, he wants to translate it that the Gemara is asking, Mi midchi gavra matame gavra, does one does a person get pushed away because of another person? It means that Malchus based David is pushed aside because of Shmuel's Tfilo. What, what does that mean? Because for two and a half years, Shmuel <laughs> kept Shaul alive. And Shmuel's prayer help that Shaul lived an extra these extra two and a half years and even though Hashem wanted to kill him but he ended up living longer and um, uh, until David HaMelech needed to become king so the Gemara is asking that Malchus based David ended up getting pushed off the kingship of David was pushed off an extra two and a half years because of this prayer of, Sh of Shmuel and the Gemara's answer is that um, Hashem listens to the prayer of his prophets. And uh, in a way that Malchus based of it is, the Gemara's answer is yes, it does get pushed off uh, because of uh, um, because of the prayer of, 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 of a prophet. In other words, like a tzaddik is geyser, it brings a verse. It brings a, the Gemara brought a verse. That I am the one who 
made gzeroi's decrees with my mouth and um haragdim be'imre fi and um not because they did anything wrong but it's because it's the word of the word of my mouth and the way they're translating it is um if i'm not mistaken they're translating it to mean that it's the word of the prophets um be'imre fi v'negzeira shegozar well, no, they're not. They're not translating it that. Okay, that's I guess taking it a little too far. Uh, but they're translating it to mean that it's uh, that Hashem, uh, you know, even if they don't deserve it, but sometimes uh, things get things can get pushed off because Hashem makes such a gzera. In this case, it was because of Shmuel's tefillah. Hashem sadeg goyzer hakadosh baruch hu makayim. Yes, uh, Ben. I wanted to say I find it interesting that two people had to die early. In order for for the kingship of David to exist, who, who are the two? Somebody that gave him seventy years to live, right? Ah. Adam Arishon. Okay. Adam okay. Arishon gave him seventy to years to live, uh -huh. and now Shmuel again had to die early to uh -huh. for him to start his, his kingship. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So it, wasn't it must physically. have been very important for Hashem to have David's kingship. Right. Well, what it, what it, what what's interesting about both cases is both of them wanted this. Right. Adam gave up seventy years, and Shmuel wanted that the work of his hands should right. succeed. And guess what? In a certain sense, both of them are the work of Shmuel's hands. Shmuel's student is David also. Right. And so but Shmuel wanted. He wanted David. He wanted to pass away before, uh, you know, uh, before uh, before Shaul, and he, he also wanted David to succeed. So he's uh, he's sort and of. I uh, think I think Hashem wanted the kingship of David so good so much that he, mm -hmm. you know, right, right, right. It is yes, interesting. As much as he loved Shmuel, equal to Moshe and not, Aaron together, right. but he says everybody will give a little bit, and I'll have King David. Right, right. Well, it boils down to Shmuel's tefillah. Shmuel caused it. That's the tr yeah. truth. So with Shmuel, it's Shmuel sort of caused the whole. But uh, yeah, caused the, him to pass Adam away. also gave it from his own will. Adam gave it. That's, yeah. yeah. Adam gave it. Shmuel uh, also know, gave it. He gave it. Right, right. Okay. So based now. On what ben, based on what Ben's what saying, I wonder if there's this connection between uh, Shmuel Hanavi being a Gilgul of Adam or some type of connection. Well, the rabbi said he doesn't talk about Gilgul. <laughs> yeah, I'm not so knowledgeable in that. No. I don't know. But uh, we did say that maybe Shmuel is a Gilgul of Moshanar. Uh, such a uh, Shmuel. Maybe, maybe, maybe Moshe is a Gilgul of Adam, and maybe there's a connection also, I think. We are all Gilguls of Adam. Nobody, nobody's ever said that. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. So um, the Gemara continues and says... That um, uh, Rab Nachman and Rab Yitzchak were sitting. Rab Nachman and Rab Yitzchak were both sitting in a suda, and uh, Rab Nachman said, "New sayed bar and uh, Rab Yitzchak said, "You're not allowed to talk in a meal because you don't want the um, the kana, excuse me, the kana is the windpipe to come before the vesha, the esophagus. If the food goes down the windpipe before it gets to the esophagus." I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah. Then, um, person, it could be obviously de sakana. Person could get could could have a it could be a major uh, danger, um, uh, life threatening uh, situation. So uh, after he finished eating, it says uh, he said this part. Yaakov avino loy meis. Yaakov didn't didn't die. So the so Rav Nachman asked him back. Oh shkayach, nice part. But uh, we have psukim. It says they they uh, they they embalmed him. They uh, they they gave Saftu Saftaya, they gave eulogy, they eulogized him, they embalmed him, they buried him. So how can you say he didn't die? So he answers back that I'm I'm darshaning a pasuk. And what's the pasuk? He brings a pasuk that um, that says Al Tirab the Yaakov, uh, that uh, ya that it compares Yaakov to his children, and that Hashem is going to bring them back from the land. Uh, that he, don't be afraid. Uh, 
because uh, I am going to bring return you, save you from afar and your children from the land where they are taken in captivity. And the Gemara, the Gemara says that you that you see the Pasuk compares Yaakov to his children, that just like his children are alive and they're going to be returned, so too Yaakov himself is alive and uh, is going to be is going to be returned. And so that shows that Yaakov never passed away. And we mentioned yesterday that Taisvis uh, says it's an interesting hint in the Pasuk in Chumash, where it's where it says uh, that Vayigva he expired, but does say he died. All the other people, when it talks about uh, when they pa- it uses the word Vayamais, they died. Here it doesn't use the word Vayamais, so it's hinting to this idea that Yaakov Avinu never never passed away. Whatever you know, obviously there's a lot of discussion of what that means exactly. Um, but and we know in general Tzadikim never die. That Tzadikim and uh, Rishoyim are dead even when they're alive. So tzaddikim, even after they pass away, they're still alive. And um, that's why we dive into people's kvarim. We dive into the, the graves. Uh, uh, the soul, the soul is still, the soul can't die. The soul can't, uh, can't pass away. And, um, uh, and so, uh, it, of course, it deserves a lot of uh, explanation and research what, the, what exactly uh, he's, he's emphasized. Of course, the commentary is debate. Does this mean physically he's alive? Or uh, um, um, does it mean spiritually he's alive but uh, at least rashi seems to want to learn it very uh, in a very uh, literal literally that he's uh, that just like his kids are alive he's alive it's 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 it, it's, uh, it's um um it means it uh um nid melahem shemes rashi says it appeared to them that he died but he really didn't die so there is such a commentary that wants to say that they that that actually yakov avinu didn't pass away when they thought he passed away. But when they brought him to Israel and they buried him, that's when he really passed away. There is such a commentary wants to say that, which is also a very interesting uh, way of explaining it. Uh, because the reason why they want to explain it that way, it fits with another Gemara that it says that Yaakov and Asa both passed away on the same day. So if you translate it that he was really alive, and they did the, the eulogies, and they thought he died. With the, they bombed him, they eulogized him, but he really was alive. Um, uh, but real, but uh, they thought he was dead, but he really was alive. You know, then, and then really, when when he passed away, was he passed away the same day that Esav was killed, and that was uh, when they went to Israel and they buried him in Israel, and uh, and that's uh, and Hashem had promised him that he would take him back to to Israel. He meant he would pr- he'd take him back even alive. So Hashem, so Hashem arranged that he would come back alive, and then he passed away. I mean, there are story, there are cases where people they thought that they passed away, and they they didn't. They find the, you know, we we hear of stories. I I I I uh, was visiting one of the nursing homes, and one of the women was telling me that she uh, she had uh, she was take she was taken into the uh, funeral home. And they thought she had passed away, and uh, sure enough, they uh, they found her. They, you know, they took her back. Um, I have a. a, a uh, other st- there are there are stories like that as well. Uh, other stories as well that I'm aware of. Okay, uh, I think someone had a question. Who wanted to say? Yes, David. Yeah, I was going to say regarding that. Um, we we say that uh, tzaddikim in general uh, are alive to a certain extent after they pass away. However, you don't see by Avram or Yitzchak that it says low mace. It's only by Yaakov it says low right. mace. A little surprising, right? Yeah. Right. And the, se- the second thing is that not only Yaakov low mace, it also says in the Gemara Moshe low mace. Moshe low mace, right. Yeah. There are, uh, there are uh, uh, other, uh, and we have the Gemara that talks about Rebbe, that he would make Kiddush. I mentioned it yesterday. Rebbe used to come every year after he died, he would come back every uh, Shabbos night to make Kiddush for his wife. Now you can't be mighty so in Kiddush if you're not alive. You can't fulfill the mitzvah of Kiddush. You have to be alive physically. You can't be some soul who makes you know makes Kiddush. So uh, it does seem like there is some physical life that we uh, uh, that we're not uh, you know really uh, uh, aware of. I also just want to correct you, David, that you said to some extent uh, the, the, in Zayhar it does say that tzaddikim they're, they're more alive when they pass away than when they're. Than when they're uh, in, in, alive in, in, in their bodies, 
Uh, when they were alive. Eliyahu, Eliyahu and Navi no. went up to... After they pass away, it's Yatir mi b'chayoyi. But in a certain sense, it's even more. There's more yeah. life. They have more uh, ability when they are when they pass away, even more than in their lifetime. Um, I, I meant by certain, to a certain extent to differentiate Avram and Yitzchak from Yaakov. Yeah, yeah, no, I understand. I'm just saying... It's, 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 so there is a, yeah, yeah, I wanted to say Eliyahu and Navi also went up in the chariot. Right, right. There's a Gomorrah called, um, um, there's a small Gomorrah, um, I forget the name, and it says that there's nine people that didn't pass away. Uh -huh. And uh, one of them is uh, Eliezer, uh, the uh, Ebed of, of Avram, mm -hmm. also didn't pass away. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeshua ben Levi, I think it mentions about... Anyway, yeah, there's, uh, there's definitely some uh, different Midrashim, Gemaras. Okay, but this, getting back this, to... This yeah. story with um, that uh, Shmo, um, uh, uh, Rabbi Yudha Nasi, didn't, uh, that he came to make Kiddush. So I don't know if you... I, I did a little... I, I, some uh, research, I guess. You know why, he's, why he, he had to stop coming back? Because one of the neighbors came to the door, and they saw him making kiddush, and uh, she went and started to tell the other neighbors, and he and he said, "I can't come anymore, because now that the word is out that I came back, it's going to look bad for the other uh, the other rabbis from the Gemara. That it's going to look like they couldn't come back, and really they can come back, but I don't want to reflect negatively on them." So wow. I'm not going to be able. I'm not going to be able to come back anymore. Wow. Wow. Very nice. Okay, let's let's continue uh, so that we can do a little extra, a little uh, new stuff today. So we are um, again. We're on uh, the five uh, B towards the bottom of the page. Um, uh, about let's see, ten lines up from the bottom, maybe nine lines up from the bottom. And uh, if you're in the art scroll, uh, we are five B. Two on the fifth paragraph. So the Gemara says over here, um, Rav Yitzchak, so Rav Yitzchak says, Kol rachav rachav, anyone that says Rachav's name, um, and Rachav was the wife of Yehoshua, Rachav was the, um, was the uh, person who the uh, host hosted, thank you, hosted the two spies that came to Eretz Yisrael in the time of Yoshua, Yoshua sent two spies to check out Jericho, Yericho. And who are the two spies? Uh, Kalev and Pinchas. And they went, and they went to the gate, and the, the uh, Rachav had a inn at the uh, entrance of Yericho, and they went there. And that, and they, when they, they went there, they tried to be very quiet, but uh, word went out, it got out that they, that they had arrived, that they came, and they're spying out the land. But anyway, Rachav, uh, was was an innkeeper, and according to some, the, the the word in Hebrew was she was a zaina. Zaina could mean a prostitute, but it also could mean that she gave mazain food and uh, and uh, maybe had an inn. And according to some, it could mean both that she she basically uh, you know, she she ran a, uh, a, a double business over there where she would provide uh, you know, provide people with uh, uh, both elements, you know. Uh, yeah, just place to stay and uh, yeah. other and, type of uh, and entertainment. Right. Two services, right? Two services, Two services. right? Okay, so, uh, got that. So, in any event, yeah. What does it mean? What does it mean? I'm about to say. So first, I'm just saying who she was first. So, uh, so Rachav, so so Rachav had this place. So, so Rachav invited, uh, hosted these the, the uh, Pinchas and and Kalev. Uh, to her to her place and um, she told them that she she is uh, that the whole city is aware of how uh, the Hashem has helped the Jewish people and we are our hearts are melted we are afraid of you the entire that's all they needed to hear they heard that the, the people were afraid and they ultimately came back got back to Yoshua and told him uh, how uh, the city is afraid of us and we don't have to worry and so on uh, because Hashem, with all the miracles that He did, it took us out of Egypt and brought the plagues on Egypt, so on, split the sea. Oh, you know, we uh, we are uh, 
we are quite uh, uh, impressed and afraid to even uh, to start up. So that's the uh, that's who, now Rachav ended up marrying Yoshua. Yoshua married Rachav. Rachav was one of the most beautiful women. Uh, I think the Gemara Megillah. I think you guys learned it not that long ago about oh, Rachav being right. one of the four most beautiful women in the world. Anyway, so in this Gemara, I think is also there maybe in in Megillah. Uh, Megillah Tesva, yeah. So this Gemara is also there in Megillah. Now, uh, uh, so uh, so a person who says Rachav's name, the Gemara says Miyad Nikri, immediately becomes a Baal Keri. Baal Keri means he has a seminal mission. Why? Because she was such a beautiful woman. So if anyone says her name, and you know, it could it could it has a they're gonna be aroused. And uh, you know, stimulated like so. The Gemara says, "Amar le Rav Nachman." So Rav Nachman said back to Rav Yitzchak, oh, no, I, mean, I said it, and nothing happened to me. What's wrong? Well, you know, why? What's wrong with saying the uh, Rav? Uh, didn't uh, didn't affect me. So Amar le ki kamin of makira. So he said, "No, well, what I mean is, if you know knew her, and you recognized her, you saw her, then you would uh, you would." Uh, if you, if you if you you know if you, if if you knew her and you recognized her, so then mentioning her name will cause a person to be a balkeri. Now Tysus wants to learn over here that yoida um, makira is two separate things. Perish be yoida shabaala. If you had relations with her, then you would become a balkeri. And makira means you saw her, so you saw her beauty, or you 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 were familiar with. Uh, having relations with her, either one would cause either one, or according to some translate Tysus to mean both together. Two interpretations of how to read Tysus, but basically that's a person that a, a person could have a seminal omission, which I guess the Gemara is saying that um, as what's the what's the Gemara trying to teach us? So number one, I guess it's teaching us that person should be careful not to bring up any thoughts about people that could that could cause them to have. A uh, emission, seminal emission, and one of those people would be like similar to Rachav. So I'm a lay Rav Nachman. Oh, no, I mean, uh, no. so next Gemara is Ki have a miftri mehadavi. So we're continuing over here when they were departing from each other. Amar Where are we? I'm lost. Where? I'm sorry. We are uh, I'm in, in the art school. Let me pull it up here. Five B two. Thank you. And, uh, we are Seven lines from the bottom. The last paragraph. Okay, okay yeah. got it. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, miftari mehadadi when they were uh, departing from each other. Amar le Rav Nachman asked Rav Yitzchak, "Livarch um, Mar, uh, let Master bless me." Amar le, so he said to him, "Em shol I will give you a parable. Lamahadavar daima. What is this similar to? Laadam to a person." Midbar was going in the desert. He was hungry and tired and thirsty. And he found a tree that the fruits, its fruits were sweet. And its shade was, was, was pleasant. And there was a stream of water that passed below it. So he ate from the fruit. And he drank from the water. And he sat in the shade, in its shade. And when he wanted to leave, Omar, he said, Elon, Elon, tree, tree, Bama, Ava, Rechacha, with how shall I bless you? If I say that your fruit should be sweet, it's already sweet. It is sweet. Your fruits are sweet. I should bless you that your shade should be pleasant. It is pleasant. It is already pleasant. That your the stream of water that passes that you should have a stream of water pass below beneath you. You already have a stream of water that passes below you. Ella, rather, may it be your will. That all the uh, sprouts, uh, growths, shoots that that shoot that grow from you that they plant from you. And now we turn the page to 6a. Yihiyu Kamaischa should be like you. And so that's what he wants to bless Rab Nachman as well, in the same way. Afata, you also. How should I bless you? In 
If I bless you with Torah, you have Torah. In Ba'oisher, if I bless you with wealth, Hare Oisher, there is wealth. In Ba'vanim, Hare Banim, if I bless you with children, you have children. So you have all these things. Ela, rather, ye rotsen, sheyu, tetsoi, meyacha, kumaiska, rather, it should be, may be a will that the children that come from you will be just like you. That was his, that was his, uh, his blessing that the, you know, that, that, that the uh, Rab, Rab, Rab Nachman, um, Asked for the blessing, so he got this. Uh, he, he got this blessing that his children should be just, just like, just like him. Rabbi. Now, famous question over here is: What does it mean that uh, that if they bless you with Torah, you have Torah? It's Torah is uh, unlimited. How could you uh, say uh, if I bless you with Torah, you have Torah? Torah really? Uh, there's a so is it possible to say that about someone? In fact, the whole Gemara was Rav Nachman asking Rav Yitzchak questions. So obviously he didn't have everything. He was still asking. He had a lot of questions that he was asking Rav Yitzchak. So he says, "If I, uh, how do I bless? What should I bless you with? If I bless you with Torah, you have Torah." So uh, it seems surprising. What, like, what does that mean that uh, he has Torah? Yeah, what did you want to ask, Ezra? What do you want to say? Yeah. I'm looking at this, and um, I, I, I'm just saying it's it sounds to me like he's very he's very prideful in the way of, in his response. What do you mean? Well, you know, he said he says. I don't know what I, I don't know what to I, I don't know how what I should say to you. And the response is, well, just imagine this is a mushal, et cetera, et cetera. This is so good, this is so good, this is so good. So uh, you know, you're coming along and you're asking me the same kind of things. So uh he's he's sort of taking himself for granted in the response. Unless I'm misunderstanding it, or he's, he's taking himself to be, you know, I, I, I in in his response. He's imp he's imp he's impressed with Rav Nachman. Doesn't really know what he could add to what Rav Nachman has already. Right, but the the end the what what is being said over here isn't that what Rav Nachman is saying to him? So he says this is a mushal. Or who's saying this is a no? Rabbi Yitzchak is answering. I want to give you a blessing. Let me give you a parable of my of what I, how I'm going to bless you because I don't really know exactly how to bless you. So Rabbi Yitzchak answers. It gives him the parable and says, "And I'm going to do the same thing with you. I'll give you the blessing, and the blessing is that I can't really bless you. So I'll bless your children that they should be like you." So it's Rabbi Yitzchak answering Rav Nachman and giving him a blessing. Uh, that uh, that he sh that his children should be like him. So it's not Rav Nachman talking about himself. It's it's uh, it's Rav Yitzchak talking about Rav Nachman that you really have everything. So yeah, so it's not it's not that it, he's not being uh, arrogant in any way. He's, uh, he asked him for a blessing. Now, um... so wait a minute. They're separated from each other. So. Who is ask? Who is saying? You know, I, I want to bless. Let, you, let me clarify. Let me clarify. Rav Yitzchak was the was the great scholar. It seems like from this whole Gemara, Rav Nachman kept on asking Rav Yitzchak questions. But at the end of it, it turns out that Rav Nachman was no small person. Rav Yitzchak had tremendous respect for Rav Nachman to the extent that he said, "I don't know what to bless you." But the whole Gemara was questions that Rav Nachman had to Rav Yitzchak. So Rav Yitzchak obviously is this greater scholar. And even at the end, Rav Nachman wants a blessing from Rav Yitzchak. So Rav Yitzchak must have been this tremendous scholar and great person. And uh, Rav Nachman wants the blessing from Rav Yitzchak. But Rav Yitzchak answers him back and says, you know, you do have everything. You have Torah, you have wealth, you have children. 
what can I really bless you with? And they made it, you know, uh, there are other Gemaras as well, that Rav Nachman is a very successful uh, individual, and, in, you know, and he's a Dayon Mumcha, there's a term that's used about Rav Nachman, that he was a, a expert judge, uh, he was an Anav, he was, you know, he, had, he, he was a, a great scholar, and, um, 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 you know, and he was extremely knowledgeable in all areas, in all areas of Torah, even though in our Gemara, he's asked a lot of questions to Rav Yitzchak, but he was extremely knowledgeable in all of the, all of the Gemaras and, and Sifras and Sifri, you know, all the Teseftas, all the Midrashim, he, he, he seemed to, uh, to have it all. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, he wanted a bracha from this great Rav Yitzchak, who he kept on asking questions to, and Rav Yitzchak is answering him that, uh, okay, I'm going to bless you that your children will be will be like you. Does that clarify it uh, a little better? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have to stop here. Zaygez on everyone. Have a Thank wonderful you, day. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. Have a good Bye -bye, day, everybody. everyone.